Hi and welcome back to Love English. I'm Leila and today I have got a lot of vocabulary for you. But in today's lesson, I'm going to be sharing 51 words that are commonly used in posh British English. Yes, that's right. I'll be sharing the language, the vernacular, the syntax of the upper class in the UK. Now, of course, this is not only restricted to the posh upper classes. If you want to boost your language level, sound a little bit more sophisticated, then simply using some of these words in replacement of others is going to help you sound more sophisticated, a little bit more intelligent, and will certainly help at university, in business situations, or formal gatherings where you may be socializing with some more sophisticated people and you want to make sure you feel confident, able to express yourself in a way that gives a good impression, that makes you feel like you have a fantastic grasp of the English language. And of course, by using these 51 words, you are massively broadening your vocabulary and adding to your language range. So if you'd like to know what it means to call a man dashing and a woman ravishing, whether you should use dessert or pudding to sound posh, which one is posh, then keep watching because I am going to tell you all. 51 words in British English to make you sound, well, posh. Right, these first set of words are going to help you avoid using very, really, and so. These are commonly used in English, and some of these indeed are used in a more sophisticated way, perhaps by more of the upper classes in the UK. Number one, probably my favourite, rather, rather, meaning fairly or to some degree. It's rather hot outside today, isn't it? He was rather bored this morning in class. I did notice. Number two, a little more posh. Terribly, terribly, meaning very. Of course, terrible usually means bad, but when used as an intensifier, terribly, then we are simply saying more, very, so. I am terribly hungry today. It was terribly kind of you to help her. Number three, this is confusing. Awful means bad, but awfully can actually be a good thing. He was awfully kind to me the other day. It was awfully sweet of you to help me with my bags. Awfully, not awful, awfully with an adjective there will actually mean very. And it does express a sense of real gratitude, thinking you were being exceptionally kind or nice. Of course, we can use it, like very, in the negative. It was awfully rude of you to leave without saying goodbye. He was awfully upset. I wonder why. So, awfully, very, quite strong, quite posh. Try using it next time instead of very. Number four, jolly, jolly. Jolly essentially means very, but we would stick to using it with good or bad. That was a jolly good party last night. It was jolly bad weather yesterday, don't you think? So jolly good or jolly bad. You could also use jolly well. Jolly well you could use as kind of an exclamation, making something stronger. I am jolly well going to tell your mother if you don't start doing your homework in class. A little bit of a threat there too. So jolly good, jolly bad, and jolly well. Very strong, nice expression there, jolly well. Number five, this is in fact in replacement of completely or totally, utterly, utterly. I was utterly disappointed when he canceled our date. She was utterly devastated when he canceled the wedding. So completely, utterly. This is essentially used uh, usually with a stronger adjective utterly devastated. I'm utterly confused by your behaviour. So a strong adjective, add utterly, and it's extra strong and a little bit posh. Now six and seven are intensifiers, but they actually reduce the strength of the adjective. So fairly and somewhat. I was fairly convinced he was telling the truth. 
I was somewhat concerned that she hadn't called for a while. We don't want it to be too strong, so we're just softening our language there. So concerned, confused, these kind of adjectives are weakened a little by these intensifiers. It's not any less serious, but of course, in a posh situation, maybe a formal situation, you don't want to make things too strong, too passionate. So I was somewhat confused by your comments. Not I was very confused by your comments. That could be a little bit confrontational, maybe even rude. So softening your language a little bit more posh and of course, more polite. And of course, number eight, quite. Quite. Now, in American English, quite does mean very. It makes it stronger. He was quite angry. But in American English, this means very. In British English, this actually softens rather than strengthened by very, for example. For example, in British English, these biscuits are quite tasty. We were quite thrilled to hear the Queen's speech. So quite, a lovely replacement of very, but again, in a kind of more sophisticated and a softer way. Of course, if you want to speak in a more posh, formal manner, then being polite and gentle is actually a common trait of kind of the upper classes, people that speak well. Right, moving on, let's have a look at some rather posh adjectives. Adjectives that you might not have heard of before, but many of these are absolutely acceptable to use in day-to-day -day English. So number nine, splendid. Splendid. What a splendid idea. We had a splendid day together yesterday in the park. The weather was beautiful, the sun was shining, the birds were singing. It was splendid. So splendid simply means wonderful, very good. Number 10. Now this is quite posh. If you use this adjective, some people might think it's a little strange. It is definitely associated with the upper classes, but it's something you might hear in a Hugh Grant film, for example. So spiffing, spiffing, meaning very good, excellent. You did a spiffing job organising the party. He looked rather spiffing. So very good, excellent, but really less commonly used in day-to-day -day English. You'd only really want to use an adjective like that if you are talking to the Queen. You never know, it could happen. Number 11. Listen to my pronunciation. Marvellous. Marvellous. How many syllables do you hear there? Three. Fine. Totally acceptable. Use this adjective with two syllables and you're going to sound definitely a little more sophisticated. So, instead of marvellous, try marvellous, marvellous. So we're shortening that middle syllable. And of course, marvellous does mean excellent, amazing, wonderful. The dinner was marvellous. Everything was beautifully laid out and we had a lovely evening. He behaved marvellously, adverb there, but still acceptable. The dinner was marvellous. He behaved marvellously. Number 12. Glorious. Glorious. Meaning very beautiful, impressive or enjoyable. It was a glorious day. We all had such a spiffing time. There we go. Mix the adjectives together. So glorious. The wedding was glorious. It could not have been better. What a glorious home you have. It's absolutely beautiful. Right, number 13, a nice meaty one to get your teeth into. The pronunciation, stupendous, stupendous. It's kind of, it's a nice, it rolls off the tongue, stupendous. Essentially meaning very large or very impressive. They had a stupendous garden. There were flowers everywhere. The ball was stupendous. We had a lovely evening, dancing, singing, <gasps> drinking. It was stupendous. So a lovely posh adjective for you to try and use. Comment below and have a go. Another word that we could use to describe an activity, an event, or a situation that gives you great pleasure and enjoyment is delicious, delicious. Now, of course, you know delicious to mean tasty. The meal was delicious, 
but in posh English, we could use it in this new way. So we could say the gossip was delicious. It was enjoyable to hear. It was interesting, fun. I have some delicious gossip to tell you. It's an overly exaggerated way of saying something is great. So of course we could as well use it for people, but it really is an exaggeration. My friend Sarah is one of the most deliciously funny people you will ever meet. So deliciously funny. It's a great way to exaggerate something. Now two adjectives to describe people. The first to describe a man, dashing, dashing. Meaning smart, attractive, confident, elegant. I'd often tell my male friends they look dashing if they're wearing a nice suit and tie. You look dashing, don't you, today? And for a woman, ravishing, ravishing. She was absolutely ravishing in the red dress. Meaning attractive, very beautiful. But of course, these are less common adjectives, but great to use to sound more posh. Number 16, instead of amazing, you could say extraordinary, extraordinary. He was extraordinary. Of course, this simply means amazing, very good, wonderful, fantastic. It's a strong adjective. The views from my hotel were extraordinary. You could see the sea for miles. Every time I use them, I try and do a little bit of a posh accent. Not that posh. Sabra, much better at posh accents than me. So extraordinary, meaning extra ordinary, but not pronounced like that. So not everything in the land of the posh gentry is wonderful, spiffing, splendid, extraordinary. Things are sometimes bad and we need some adjectives to describe bad things or situations. So these adjectives are all negative. Number 18, atrocious, atrocious, meaning very, very bad. His homework was atrocious. His behaviour today after drinking too many beers was atrocious. He was so rude to everybody. So it is a very strong adjective. Use it carefully when you want to describe something as being bad. We could say the weather is atrocious, but we would expect it to be raining very heavily, extremely windy, you can't go out. A little bit of rain is not atrocious. A strong adjective meaning bad. Abysmal, number 19, exactly the same way. It means extremely bad, so bad, the worst it could possibly be. But abysmal does essentially mean, it's a synonym of atrocious. Abysmal, awful, very, very bad. The service at the restaurant was abysmal. I did not leave a tip. 20 and 21, ghastly, ghastly, and make sure you do pronounce it with the R, ghastly, and beastly, beastly. Again, two adjectives meaning very bad or unpleasant. Often we'd use them to describe an unpleasant situation or even a person's behavior that wasn't particularly nice. The weather outside was beastly or ghastly. Did you see how windy it was? Did you see her dress? It was absolutely ghastly. What was she thinking? The way he spoke to her was absolutely beastly. How dare he? Number 22. Instead of saying someone is stupid or their idea is stupid or foolish, you could use absurd. Absurd. Much more sophisticated way of calling someone stupid. Oh, don't be absurd. There is no way we'll get there in time if we leave now. Are you completely absurd? How much money did you spend? So. Absurd, stupid, foolish, not particularly clever. Number 23, a lovely long word that you might want to practice with me. Preposterous, preposterous. Meaning totally unreasonable in a way that is shocking or annoying. To suggest that we shouldn't have a holiday this year was absolutely preposterous. It is totally preposterous that we only have 162,000 subscribers. Why don't you click subscribe now and follow Love English? Okay, a few more adjectives now going off in different directions. An adjective that I was not aware of, tight, 
tight. Now, normally we refer to clothes being loose or tight, but tight in posh English actually means a little bit drunk, inebriated, intoxicated. They've had a few too many whiskies or whatever the posh people drink, champagne. So he was a little bit tight, don't you think? A little bit drunk. I think he's a little bit tight. Too many beers, if you ask me. Now, really drunk in posh talk? Don't say drunk as a skunk, nice idiom for you there, but instead you would say blotto, blotto. I am totally blotto. I have had so much champagne. Lovely day though, extraordinary. 25, seedy, seedy. This essentially means I'm not feeling very well. So if you tell someone, oh, I'm feeling a little bit seedy, then you're saying, I don't feel very well. Simple as that. Okay, we're halfway there and now we are looking at nouns, super posh nouns. So number 26, instead of saying I'm in trouble or I have a problem, you can say I'm in a bit of a bind, a bind. So a bind means a problematic situation. I'm in a bit of a bind. You don't have 10 pounds you could lend me for my glass of champagne. I'm in a little bit of a bind and I could really do with some help. Now number 27, don't say that someone is boring, but use the noun. What a bore. Did you listen to him at dinner last night? Blah, 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 blah. I did not listen at all. He is such a bore. So a bore means a person that is boring, uninteresting. Now number 28, you might say dessert, ice cream, sweets, but the posh would refer to it as pudding. Pudding. What did you have for pudding? Oh, I had the most stupendous cheesecake. If you say stupendous cheesecake, that does sound a bit crazy, but certainly you would say pudding in a posh situation. 29, don't say PJs, PJs, uh-uh. You need to refer to the whole word, pajamas, pajamas. So I'm not putting my PJs on, but I'm wearing my pajamas. Simple, but that's the difference between the upper class and, well, me probably. I'd say PJs, would I? Maybe I'd say pajamas. I'll think about that. Now, banter is a way of communicating that's fast, witty, funny. I often banter with my students in class, meaning we have quick, funny conversations. But the posh would not use the word banter. Oh, no, no, no. They would use repartee, repartee. Make sure you hrrr the R a little bit there. There was a lot of repartee at the party last night. The champagne flowed and the conversation was witty and funny. Number 31, a room in your house where you sit, watch television on your sofa, and you might call this a lounge, but the posh, no, no. They would say sitting room or drawing room, sitting room or drawing room. This is much more posh and sophisticated. So at Buckingham Palace, there is no lounge, there is a sitting room or a drawing room. I don't know what the difference is. It's the same thing. It's just a posher word, apparently. 32, as I've just said, we would say sofa, not settee or couch. Settee and couch is perfectly fine, but the upper classes would sit on a sofa. It's the same thing, it's just a different word. Number 33, napkin. Pass me the napkin. Could you pass me a napkin, please? Not serviette or, I don't know, tissue, but no, napkin, napkin. Just after dinner, napkin. Number 34, a helping. No, we're not talking about assisting somebody. We're actually referring to a portion of food, a serving, a serving. So I had a very big helping of cheesecake. It was delicious. Yes, helping, a serving of food. Do you need to go to the toilet? The WC, the little girl's room, the bathroom? Uh-uh. If you're in a posh restaurant, you need to go to the loo or the lavatory. Lavatory. These are the posher words to use when you're out in a nice restaurant and you need to go and take a tinkle. Yes, you would go to the loo or the lavatory, not the toilet or the bathroom. 
Could you direct me to the lavatory, please? Personally, I would use Lou. Lavatory just feels a bit too old and dated. So Lou is a nice compromise. Number 36, this is a lovely word. I think you could definitely use this. Yonks. I haven't seen you in yonks. I haven't seen you for yonks. Yes, it means ages, a long time. So yonks is posh talk for a very long time. Right, moving on, exclamations. Whether you're frustrated, annoyed, we have an exclamation in posh English for you. Now, of course, for number seven, this is kind of in replacement of God, which can be quite insulting for some people. Often people consider it to be blasphemy, meaning insulting to God. So instead of using this as a form of exclamation, as a form of expressing your annoyance, anger, frustration, or even surprise, you can use gosh. Gosh. Oh, gosh. Oh, golly gosh. There's a nice little phrase for you. So it's a little bit more polite, posh, and you're avoiding kind of blasphemy, which generally speaking is a good idea. Oh gosh, that's wonderful news, you're having a baby. Or negative, oh gosh, that's very disappointing, you didn't pass your test. Oh no, oh dear, oh God. Don't use those, use oh gosh. Expressing your surprise or pleasure. I say, what a lovely idea, let's go for a walk by the river. I say, expressing pleasure, surprise. It's a nice thing, it's a positive exclamation. 39, actually stolen from the Italians. Bravo, bravo. Make sure you've got a bit of a posh accent with the R going on there, bravo. Bravo, obviously, if you're Italian, you know it means well done. And it means exactly the same thing in posh English. They haven't changed the meaning, they've simply stolen the word. So instead of saying well done, you can say bravo. Now, although in Italian, bravo would be directed towards a man, brava would be directed towards a woman, we don't really distinguish between masculine and feminine in the UK. So bravo for everybody. Bravo, old chap, jolly good news. Number 40. Okay, I know I said don't use God, but actually this might be something you hear in a Hugh Grant film, a posh British film, or you might want to use it yourself. God forbid, God forbid. Essentially meaning, please, I hope not. So God forbid she doesn't pass the exam. What are we gonna do? God forbid. Number 41, oh bugger, oh bugger. So this is, again, posh, still a little bit rude. It's almost swearing, really. But to say, oh, bugger, is an exclamation when something has gone wrong or bad. Oh, bugger, I forgot the time. I'd better get going. There we go. Oh, bugger. Number 42 and 43. When you don't believe what someone has told you, when you think it's ridiculous or untrue, you could use, what nonsense? What nonsense? Don't use nonsense, nonsense, okay? Or you could use, this is quite posh and probably less commonly used in day-to-day -day English, but it's fun. Poppycock, poppycock. He was talking complete poppycock. I did not understand a word of what he was saying. I think he was a little bit blotto. Likewise, 44, and this is fun. Just the sound of this word I think is quite fun. Codswallop. Cod's wallop. Remember, be careful with these exclamations. If you respond to someone when you don't believe what they've said, then it does sound quite rude. If you say, cod's wallop, I don't believe you, they are going to be offended. It might be better not to direct these exclamations at people. Unless, of course, they are talking utter cod's wallop, then tell them. The government was talking absolute cod's wallop. Nobody believed a word they said. Right, now, when it comes to addressing people, older gentlemen in the posh, sophisticated upper classes like to use one word in particular, old. Old. Yes, probably because they are old, but perhaps it's a term of respect, endearment. In fact, they would say, old chap, old chum, old sport, old bean, or old fellow. Yes, in the upper classes, men, when they are 
talking with other men, perhaps in their whiskey and cigar club, would say, old fellow, what have you been up to? Jolly good job, old chap. Yes, these are still expressions some of the upper classes might use when they are referring to each other. I guess you need to know someone reasonably well to use these expressions. Now, there isn't really an equivalent when we're referring to women, but often darling, darling, would be a term that you would use when addressing a woman. However, men, be careful. In the UK, sometimes using darling or sweetie, if you're a man referring to a woman, can be seen as a little bit offensive, particularly in the workplace, in professional environments. So I might use darling to refer to a friend. It shows affection, a fondness for that person. But for a man to use it, be careful. It doesn't always go down very well in the workplace. I would perhaps avoid this unless maybe it's your wife or your girlfriend. Darling, darling, how are you, darling? You look ravishing, darling. Now, we can in fact use darling to refer to a person in an affectionate way, meaning they're very sweet and kind. Your daughter is a darling. She has been so lovely all day. Someone that is kind or thoughtful. Right, I can't believe I've done it. That has been a little bit of a marathon. We're at the last word, 51, and I'm going to end with this word. Cheerio. Cheerio. Yes, it's also a cereal, but the posh would often use cheerio to say goodbye to whoever they were saying goodbye to. So instead of saying bye, goodbye, good night, see you later, you could say cheerio, old chap. Have a spiffing day. So there we go, 51 words that you can use to make your English a little bit more sophisticated, to sound a little bit more posh. And of course, we have plenty more lessons where that came from. So if you are interested in sounding more sophisticated and posh in British English, we've got some great lessons that you should watch right now. Thank you so much for watching. Have a marvellous day. Cheerio!